Welcome everyone. I'm Kevin Yu. Today we are going to explore not just a venue, but the place where a story takes place, the Genegli Learning Resource Center. This library is known for its distinctive bubbling bucket shape, and not only is it striking to look at, but it's the central location for this game. In this library, every corner is full of possibilities. From the hard food area to the game area to the bookshelves, the variety of environments not only adds to the charm of the venue, but also provides infinite inspiration for the game's design. Players will need to follow the clues and explore those special spaces to solve the puzzles and get closer to the ultimate secret of the game. Speaking of clues, each clue in the game is carefully designed to guide players in the right direction. Each art code is hand-drawn with the image subtly hinting at the location of the next level. The result of scanning each art code provides interesting tidbits related to the current physical environment or further instructions for the game. For example, a painting that depicts the unique architectural style of the library is not only a visual focus, but also a key clue for players to identify the game setting. Finally, through this game, players will not only enjoy solving puzzles, but also truly experience the power of knowledge in exploration. I used three core idea cards in the design of this game. The first is the exploration card. The game encourages players to travel around the library in search of unique puzzles and clues. This not only adds to the fun of the game, but also allows players to experience the rich environment of the library in deeps. Next up are the riddles cards. Each section of the game is linked together through puzzles that drive the game forward. These puzzles delicately incorporate actual elements of the library, enhancing the physical experience of the game. Then, there are the collect cards. Players need to collect various pieces and then explore, eventually piecing together key clues that lead to victory. This mechanic deepens the challenge and engagement of the game. And at the same time, there were a number of challenges involved in designing the game. Firstly, the disruption card was the focus of design considerations. Considering that the library is a place of study that needs to be quiet, the game design avoids elements that may disturb others. For example, no high venue sounds will be present during the game, and players' paths of movement have been designed to be as non-repetitive as possible to minimize the impact on other visitors. In addition, overcrowding is a challenge to be aware of. Firstly, players must complete all their pre-release levels to unlock the final clue. This gradual reveal mechanic ensures that everyone experiences the game in order. Secondly, the final key is collected in the form of an everyday behavior, picking up a student card from a printer. This fits the everyday scenario of the library, prevents players who have not completed the game from noticing that this behavior is part of the game. This prototype uses art code technology, and the HTML code is on GitHub, accessible to the public through specific domains. The game mode involves the player finding pieces of paper with art code on them and scanning them to unlock clues to travel to the next level. In the first step of the game, the player receives the first art code a hand-drawn picture of the library's exterior and the doorstep. Next, the player finds the second art code and the entrance to the library, which is a picture of a genderless toilet sign, and scan it to get an overhead map of the library. 
this is the more difficult part of the game. And I verbally prompted the player to use the near match far more approach to assemble the correct art code. The third art code was then a bookshelf with a specified number, which was scanned to reveal a quest about gender-neutral toilets, and when answered correctly, a clue was given instructing the player to take the lift upstairs and look for the specified book. There are too many books in the bookshelf. The quest was temporarily changed to look for a stationary box to reduce the difficulty. Next, the fourth art code is a picture of a hot meal and directs the player to the hot food area. The fifth art code prompts the player to combine existing art codes to get new clues. Finally, the sixth art code prompts player to collect their student cards in the printer area to complete the game. In order to assess the fun and playability of this game, we conducted a field test by directly questioning three players. Players were asked about the sources of fun and problems with the game. Players appreciated the unique design of the game materials. The creative patterns were not only easily recognizable, but also stimulated players' curiosity about what was to follow. In particular, several players mentioned that the task of combining two pictures by changing their perspective in the second level was very interesting. In addition, players particularly liked the interaction with the physical world, which exceeded their expectations of traditional online games. However, some players pointed out that the clues in some levels were hidden too deep, such as under book or tables, which increased the difficulty of the game, and sometimes I needed to improvise the strategy and change the place where the art code was placed in order to reduce the difficulty. In addition, as they were not very familiar with the facilities in the library, the locations pointed to by some clues were difficult to guess or easy to guess wrongly. And although they could find the correct solution by spending some more time, they would be confused during the game. In the testing, I found that when supporting multiplayer playing at the same time, I need to keep supplementing new art codes in the physical location of those levels because the art codes of some levels must be collected and used again in the final riddle. To solve this problem, I plan to place multiple copies of the same art codes in each level to make sure that each player can complete the game independently without affecting the others. After a deep reflection on the completed game design, I conceived some new ideas for enhancing the player experience through coherent storylines and mini-games. In particular, I considered how episode content and mini-games cards could be more tightly integrated into each level. My goal was to make each challenge not just a part of the game, but a piece of the story, so that the completion of each level reveals a piece of the story and interacts with the physical environment to create a coherent game narrative. Imagine a level in the Hartford area where the player encounters a mysterious chief who decides to give to the player who completes a challenge with an ascent recipe. This challenge, completing a hard meal within a time limit, not only tests the player's speed and efficiency, but also serves as a key point in the development of the story. To gain a deeper understanding of how the combination of interactive narratives and physical environments can increase player engagement, I referenced a paper published by Professor Mans Har of the University of Dublin. The paper emphasizes the importance of the presence of narrative techniques in location-based games that are integrated with the physical environment. It suggests that by optimizing the integration of the game's narrative with the physical environment, the player's sense of immersion and presence can be dramatically increased. 
This inspired me to design novels that could place more emphasis on the storytelling of the environment, making games more than just digital interactions, but a bridge to understanding and expanding knowledge.